great case studies. In the San Diego Police Department, there is an excellent model of a cooperation between the FBI and San Diego Police. They actually have a city intelligence officer inside the department who's able to sit there and say, you know what, this matters, this doesn't, move this forward, don't bother with this, I'm going to check this out. That's the kind of on the ground uh, capability that you really need if you want to continue to, to evolve with police departments. Uh, intelligence training, again, that's good, but it's not going to solve the problem, they still got the day job. And then this last one, the uh, use of technology solutions and uh, training for second responders, I can't stress enough how we need to do more of that. The problem, of course, is resources. There are really good technological tools to be able to assess what's going on in your environment, but they take time and resources and training. And it's very, very difficult with these tight budgets, because that's the one thing nobody wants to talk about. During the recession, you know, I know for a fact there was a lot of capability that we had created that just has gone away. Because local PDs, particularly if they've never had an attack, never been involved, they sit there and say, why do we keep paying for this? Obviously, if it's LA or New York, we should pay attention. But everybody else? Big question. Um, so just, just I'll go through a couple of different things, and I know I'm probably over my time, but um, just, just run through these. These are ways in which, uh, this really applies more to school shootings, but it's the same kind of thing for a tragic event. You have to take a look at four anomalies, you have to take, you have to control the timeline, and you have to provide the means for somebody <coughs> to get information into you during an event. Go ahead. Um, you've seen this. And then these are some things that if you are providing protection for a site, critical infrastructure, these are what the military and DHS tells you you should focus on. That uh, these are all the plans right here, how to respond. This last one I like in terms of being unpredictable. Okay. Um, I'm sorry I went over, I went fast on that. But let me leave you with this thought. The, the, it's not over. I wish it was. It's not over, and I can make the case it's never going to be over. Yes. Because it's the hazardous and the have nots. And there is a whole world, there's millions and millions of people who are living in poverty. And millions of people who believe that, that their religion is the answer to the betterment of their lives. And so any affront to the religion is what is going to drive them. So therefore, they're going to come at us asymmetrically, and it's going to take time. The hardest problem for the American society is that we don't go in their timelines. The timeline for a lot of the Al-Qaeda uh, um, thought leaders is generational. For us, it's year to year. So, but we need to continue to focus on this. Thank you very much for your time. And thank you so much. Any questions, any other comments?